A lot of people have this idea that Beaujolais is not good and that's just nonsense. Give Beaujolais a chance. Hi, I'm Wyandine Caroline and today we're gonna to talk about Beaujolais, which is my favorite region. Not coincidentally because I live right next to it and that's where we are right now. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the region of Beaujolais. We're gonna talk about the climate, the soil type. We're gonna talk about the labeling system and how the different labels work. So we will talk about the cruise of Beaujolais. We're also gonna talk about how Beaujolais is made. We're gonna talk about Beaujolais Nouveau, and we're gonna talk a lot about the history of Beaujolais and why it's a really underrated region. And at the end, we are going to taste some Beaujolais. So stay tuned, this is going to be a wild ride. In general, Beaujolais is going to be light, fruity red made from the Gamay grape. Anything that says Beaujolais on the label and that's red is going to be 100% Gamay. There is actually quite a bit of Chardonnay here, but most of it goes into Cremant de Bourgogne because Beaujolais is affiliated with Burgundy when it suits Burgundy. <laughs> it kind of gets absorbed into it. There is a little bit of Beaujolais Blanc here, but they're pretty hard to find outside of the region and a tiny bit of Rosé as well. Tell me you're watching by typing Gamay in the comments. Now, in terms of placement, Beaujolais is just south of Burgundy and just north of Lyon. This is a continental climate with cool winters and warm summers. This is a region with a lot of geological diversity. We basically are right at the edge of the Massif Central, which is a huge volcanic mountain range in the center of France. It's a very hilly area with a lot of different microclimates and different soil types. Now, when we talk about Beaujolais as a region, we are in one of those Russian nesting doll situations that I talk about when I describe the Appalachian system. We have Beaujolais, then we have Beaujolais Village, which is a little bit further north, and then inside Beaujolais Village, we have the 10 crews of Beaujolais. Now the crew Beaujolais are really trendy right now and they are increasing in price deservedly. And what makes them different from basic Beaujolais is generally that they have a little bit more power, they're more complex, they have more tannins, they're ageable, they're just a bit more serious than the usual fruity light Beaujolais. The 10 crews of Beaujolais are Fleury, Morgan, Moulin Avant, Bruy, Cote de Bruy, Saint-Amour, Chirouble, Juliana, Reigny, and Chenin. That's right. That was in no particular order, um, <laughs> but Fleury is known as being the sort of pretty one, the queen of Beaujolais, they call it. Morgan is the king, or Moulin Avant. Those tend to be more powerful and robust, but there really are wonderful wines throughout the region. Now, it's important to understand that Beaujolais has a bad reputation, and this is because a lot of really cheap, crappy wine flooded the market in the 80s and 90s due to the Beaujolais Nouveau craze. Now, I love Beaujolais Nouveau. Beaujolais Nouveau is basically the first wine that gets released every year. They make a really light fruity style using a technique called carbonic maceration, which basically gives you a wine that's super light and fruity, tastes like juice, and that gets fermented really fast so they can release it onto the market early. And now, this basically was something that everyone got on board with in the 80s and 90s, and they really pumped a lot of, of Beaujolais into the market, even though it wasn't very good because it was trendy for five seconds. And this is a region that was never particularly prestigious. It's in the shadow of Burgundy. There were producers and parts of it that were more prestigious throughout history, but in general, Beaujolais was mostly drunk in Lyon by, you know, Lyonnais workers and, and people who weren't necessarily powerful either. And so this is a place that when it had an opportunity, to make money for once, people really jumped on board. And so, you know, we can't blame them for that. And we also shouldn't blame them for what they were doing 30 years ago, you know? So I think a lot of people have this idea that Beaujolais is not good and that's just nonsense. So Beaujolais Nouveau is released on the third Thursday of November and it's super fun. You should go and find some and drink it and it's light, fruity, tastes like juice and it will <laughs> you up. One thing that actually came out of this bad reputation was an opportunity for people to really kind of play around. And so what we saw in, especially in the early 2000s, is winemakers here really pioneering organic viticulture, pioneering natural winemaking. And today we have a lot of young people, we have a lot of really passionate people making incredible wines here and really care about sustainability and a connection to this region. Now the thing to know about Beaujolais as a consumer is that it still is really good value. And even the crew Beaujolais you can get for under $30 and they are better than, than a $30 Burgundy for sure. <laughs> so let's taste, it is 10 in the morning. We're gonna taste some wine. I actually was at a flurry tasting yesterday and it was amazing. Our first wine we're gonna taste is a flurry. 
So Flurry is known as being really light and really pretty. It's very feminine. And these are generally lighter styles of wine. So they tend to be pretty pale and the Flurry will have a sort of floral thing. What was interesting about this tasting yesterday is that there's actually a big dynamic range of Flurries and there are ones that have more tannins, that have more texture, and then there of course are the traditional lighter ones. So, you know, all of these like rules about this is what this tastes like and this is what that tastes like, they're bullshit. Producers have choices and they can make wine how they want. So, this is made by my friend Anne Victoire. It is uh, wonderful to drink wine made by women. We are definitely in the red fruit area. There is always this graphite thing that I get on Beaujolais. And then there is a, a floral scent that reminds me a little bit of vanilla. I don't tend to use that because that is often a word that we associate with oak, but this is not in this case oaked, but it is this sort of vanilla-y smell. And it's definitely more of the stone fruit vibe. So like dark cherries, cherries, red fruit, real good. And then on the palate, it's gonna be light. It's not gonna have too much tannin. Yum, wow. The thing about the good Beaujolais is that they have a real juiciness. And so even though they're not very tannic, this has really fine tannins that really kind of are very powdery, very fine, they're there. Um, but mostly we have this really wonderful juiciness that I think is, is coming from the alcohol. So something about the way that Gamay is, you have this nice alcohol, and so you get this kind of like a glycerol juiciness. Um, and it's really, really yummy. And it tastes like it smells, which is always a, a nice thing. And there's definitely good acidity as well. So these are wines that are super, super drinkable and that pair really well with lighter food as well, which is nice. Next, we will try our Morgon. This is from Jean Foyard, who is one of the gang of four who were pioneers of organic viticulture and natural winemaking back in the day. And this is from Morgon, which is the king of Beaujolais. So Fleury is the queen, Morgon is the king. And so this is generally more powerful and it tends to be more tannic and uh, more ageable as well. So this is a little bit darker than our Fleury was. And here we still have a lot of that, that stone fruit, but I'm getting more sort of dark cherry and plum, a little more black fruit. There's definitely the graphite thing that I get always on Beaujolais is presenting itself a little bit more like iron here and a little bit more like blood, which is nice if you're a vampire. Mm. That is awesome. Um, again, it's really juicy. It has a little more tannin than the flurry but it's still pretty uh, pretty fine grained and it has some savoriness, natural wine, a little bit of natural wine funk, but um, delicately. These, you know, these are wines that go really well with white meat, with vegetarian food, with a really wide variety of cuisine. There's not a ton of light reds in the world. And so Gamay is one of the grapes that really excels at light juicy reds. And then finally, you know, we don't have to be in Cru Beaujolais to have something really amazing. So in this case, we have a Beaujolais village, which is where there are a lot of really cool young winemakers doing fun stuff that's less expensive. And this one is actually pretty opaque and it's a big wine. It's a much bigger wine than you would expect if you, you know, came up in the world thinking Gamay was just light and fruity and nothing wine. You know, when I was learning about wine, I was told that Gamay was garbage. Like I did competitive blind wine tasting at Oxford and Beaujolais was scorned, like really scorned. It was crappy, it was cheap. It was tasted like bananas. And there is like a weird banana candy yeast that is still sometimes used in the region um, that is horrible, but it's, it's just so much more than that. <laughs> and so this, we have a lot more actually darker fruit. I'm even getting cassis, like black currant, which is something you often get on Cabernet. And I do get that sometimes on the more richer, more macerated Beaujolais. This has some baking spice too, some cinnamon, clove, and a lot of licorice, which I often do get. It's something earthy, so there's a lot of complexity here. And this has actually been been oaked. You don't expect Beaujolais to be oaked. Traditionally, it is not oaked, but a lot of people are playing around with oak now, which creates bigger wines with more tannins. There's a lot more flavor. Um, these are really interesting and, and really delicious. So Beaujolais is awesome. Give it a chance. You know, none of these are super expensive. They're not. They're not expensive wines and they really are worthy of your attention. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson on Beaujolais. Beaujolais Nouveau is coming up, so make sure to talk to your local wine merchant and see who they're gonna get in stock. Head to the link in the description to take my what wine pairs with your mood quiz. 
If you like this channel, make sure to subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends, click the little alert bell to be notified when my next video drops. Give Beaujolais a chance.